For years, Tracksmith has been making some of the most beautiful clothes in running. It's a brand that makes everything for the discerning runner, except for the shoes. That is, until now. This is the Tracksmith Elliott Runner, a double p daily trainer, and it's time to take it for a run. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kobuzi and today I'm gonna to talk about the Tracksmith Elliott and how it's been for me over the past several runs. But before I do that, I do wanna go over some disclosures. The Tracksmith Elliott is a shoe that Tracksmith sent me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Tracksmith Elliott. First, let's go over some specs and also let's go over the name. Elliot is apparently the name of the rabbit that you see on all the Tracksmith apparel. And that Elliot name comes from the two things, I think. The Elliot Lounge, which is apparently a runner's bar in Boston where Tracksmith is based. And also the Elliot Bridge, which is uh, very close to the Tracksmith headquarters in an area which a lot of the Tracksmith people will do a lot of their running. One of my favorite stories about where the Tracksmith Elliott name came from is that Tracksmith can be abbreviated, even though Tracksmith is, I think is one word, it can be abbreviated to TS for Tracksmith. And so they were thinking it's our literary reference to TS Elliott. I wasn't sure that that was it, but it also wouldn't be that off brand for Tracksmith, but it becomes from the name of the rabbit, which then comes from different runners locations in Boston, which, is a huge running city. Now let's get into some more of the specs that we're gonna care about as runners. As far as I know, I think some of the data may have changed, but the information that I have is that it is a 33 millimeter stack height shoe with a nine millimeter drop, giving it 24 millimeters or 24 and a half millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this shoe, there are two things that are put together here and they're both made out of P-back. So you've got a, a bottom layer, which is a P-backs midsole layer that is a little bit on the firmer side. And then on the inside, we have a triple thickness insole, which is also made out of P-backs. The idea being that this is a very squishy layer of P-backs because you can kind of tweak P-backs to be everything from like kind of like marshmallow soft to super dense and firm. And this layer, the top layer, they made it a squishier layer. So that way, as you're stepping into it and walking around, you feel the softness that P-backs can deliver. And then as you're running, you get to feel some of that squishiness, but also a little bit more of a firmer response from the other layer of P-backs that this insole sits on top of. There's also a nice little Easter egg on the bottom side of this insole, a uh, little inscription that says, the curious go deeper, exploring time, distance, and speed, testing their lungs, legs, and spirits. They delight in discovery and revel in hidden depths, which makes sense. It's a nice little inscription for an Easter egg here on the bottom side of this insole, which is also on the top side, really kind of elegant. I didn't think that this would be comfortable. It looks kind of like a, um, embroidered insole with uh, embroidered stitching of the Tracksmith logo. I thought this would end up bothering my foot, but it wasn't a problem at all. The whole experience just feels rather luxurious and overall, I really like it. Um, the squishiness feeling of this insole though, uh, doesn't feel like I'm squishing like say, like a Vaporfly midsole or any of the other kind of P-Bax materials. It's kind of like squishing like chewed bubble gum in a way, cause there's a denseness to it and there's a little bit of snapback, but it doesn't feel like squishy. It's not like I'm mushing Play-Doh around, but then again, you really wouldn't want to run on Play-Doh. Moving to the outsole, we have a gum colored outsole, which uh, looks really great. And there's plenty of rubber coverage. The idea for this shoe being that it's supposed to be kind of like an all around daily trainer that you could take on mainly paved surfaces. But if you ever needed to get onto light trails, or maybe they talk about using it on that little strip of gravel that you might find on the side of a bike path, um, or if you need to get onto some light trails, and be some pine needle covered trails like our 
predominant in the East Coast, but I also do have access to some of that around me, then the tread that's on the bottom of the shoe is gonna be able to give you enough traction you need to get onto some of those softer surfaces as well. Moving to the upper, we have an absolutely beautifully designed shoe. I love the silhouette. It's also kind of a familiar silhouette. So nothing about it seems like revolutionary or never before seen, but that also feels very on brand for Tracksmith, which has a very classic and kind of almost retro kind of aesthetic in a lot of their products. We have the familiar sash that we see on a lot of Tracksmith apparel, plus that racing stripe back here, which is kind of in the fashion of a pull tab, but not exactly a pull tab. You can't really get your hand in there and it's a little bit too low, but it does make for a beautiful little color accent. The upper is made out of an engineered mesh, which is nice and comfortable. And this overall shape of the shoe is nice and roomy, a lot roomier than say a Pegasus if you're coming from that shoe, although it has a very similar kind of like toe box shape and overall feel. Uh, there is a lot more space than Pegasus tend to have. And then there's also accents in addition to the engineered mesh of this kind of like micro suede material, which feels really nice and soft. And with the lining that they've chosen for the interior of the shoe combined with some of these other nice little touches, makes it for a very elegant shoe that feels very comfortable to put on. And I've been enjoying it both for running and also for just wearing around as part of my regular dad life. And I feel like it just looks great no matter whether you're using it to run on the roads or you're just running around town. Now, Tracksmith doesn't list on their website what this shoe comes in at in terms of weights. And it's not the most scientific because I didn't weigh it until after I had put a couple of runs into the shoe. But for me in this US men's size nine, the Tracksmith Elliott came in at 9.2 ounces or 262 grams. All right, with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it was like to run in this shoe. And I will say that it is comfortable to step in. It is very comfortable to wear all day long, which is something that I've done in the shoe already. And also to take on a variety of longer runs as well. I do feel that squishiness of that top layer and then a little bit more response from the bottom layer. And overall, the tread on the bottom is surprisingly grippy. And if anything, it kind of makes me feel like the shoe is pulling me forward as I'm hitting the ground. There's not a lot of rocker on this shoe and I find that refreshing because I don't really think that you necessarily need it for a daily trainer type of shoe that kind of has this kind of foam in it. I feel like having a more moderate rocker is the right choice for this shoe, especially because then it maintains a higher level of stack height in the forefoot for longer. As far as sizing, I went with my regular US men's size nine and I felt like the sizing was really quite excellent. One of the things that I appreciate most about this shoe is the fact that there is a decent amount of space in the toe box. So I do feel like my foot can land and the toes can do what they need to do and they're not feeling super scrunched up in there. There's plenty of comfort and space. Around the sides of the ankle, the shoe does tend to feel a little bit low cut. And so some of you may want to use a little bit of the, either the runners knot or or you may want to make sure you're really cinching it down uh, at the top of the lacing system here when you're getting into the shoe, because otherwise it might feel a little bit on the loose side. But uh, for me, I didn't have to use the runner's knot and just making sure I was tied in there nice and snug before I started my run, made sure that I felt like the shoe was nice and secure. Now, one of the things that they say repeatedly in terms of the way that they're marketing the shoe is they want it to feel like when you're running on pavement, you're actually running on either some like like light trails that have pine needles covering them and get that feeling of running on a soft surface. And I will ultimately say that I do run on a lot of soft surfaces now that we've moved out here to the suburbs and I spend most of my time on exactly those kinds of soft surfaces rather than on pavement. And then taking this shoe both on pavement and on some of those softer surfaces, I feel like they've accomplished the mission in terms of what they're trying to do. But the thing that I will caution a lot of you guys is that this isn't gonna be like the super marshmallowy, squishy, soft shoe that I think some of you guys are thinking that this shoe is going to be. Like we're not talking about like ultra boost level of plush comfort in this shoe. And we're not even really talking about like Nova Blast or FF Blast Plus type of squishiness in the shoe. I'm not really getting that. It's a little bit more dense of a shoe uh, in my opinion. And for me and my daily training, my ultimate preference is to be a little bit on that extra squishier side rather than on a little bit of the firmer side than this shoe currently provides. 
But I think the real positive about that is that this is a very stable shoe and I don't feel like my feet are moving around at all as they're hitting the ground. So I feel like it's going to be something that I think a broad range of runners, even runners that think sometimes they need a stability shoe, I think they're going to be just fine. And this one, because I do think that the landing is a very stable landing on the shoe. And that a lot of that comes from the firmness that that lower layer, that denser layer of p -backs is providing. I did also take this shoe on a long run workout where I had a 16 mile run with a couple of miles at marathon pace thrown in there. And I will say that I don't feel like the Tracksmith Elliott loved running at faster paces. I, for me, I felt like I wanted kind of two things that I normally kind of expect from super foams like P-Bax, but I really wasn't getting to the levels that I wanted. Like everything was a little bit muted. So one of the things that I want from a P-Bax shoe is uh, I want it to be really springy. I want it to be poppy for when I'm using it for a workout. And I just feel like I wasn't quite getting that. It felt like a little bit lackluster when I wanted to really pick up the pace. And the other thing that I also felt like I was missing uh, when I was doing the workout in the shoe is that it didn't have like the shock absorption that super foams can also have. And so that's where I kind of felt like I enjoyed the shoe the least. But where I enjoyed the shoe the most was kind of just like an easy longer run where it was just kind of a set it and forget it kind of day and I just wanted to get out there and enjoy a lot of long miles. It didn't really matter what surface I was on, the shoe felt great and I felt like I could just cruise in the shoe forever. So that's kind of like the best way that I would use the shoe. Now a lot of you guys have also been asking me like what kind of shoe does this compare most towards and a lot of you have been asking me is this like a Nova Blast type of shoe is this like an invincible type of shoe uh, and I'd say it's not really like either of those shoes uh, I think that like the rebound of the zoom X that's in the invincible is a lot quicker uh, and so you get kind of like a different rhythm with the invincible and when it comes to the Nova Blast this shoe just doesn't quite squish as much as the Nova Blast does it is more stable than the Nova Blast but it isn't quite as squishy which is one of my favorite traits about that shoe so it's not really like either of those shoes and the shoe that I'd say that it's it's probably the closest to is the Endorphin Speed 3. Now this is a shoe that's made out of Power Run PB, another p -backs type of material in the foam here. And I do know a lot of you guys really love the shoe for those easy runs as well, despite the fact that I think it's a little bit on the firm side for that use case. But overall, I feel like the Endorphin Speed 3 is kind of like a speedier version of the Tracksmith Elliott, but they have a lot of kind of similarities in terms of the underfoot feel and how they respond for those long, easy run paces. I do think that the Endorphin Speed 3 is really quite fantastic to do workouts in, and that's my favorite way to use that shoe, and I think that's the way that Saucony intends for that shoe to be used, and I don't necessarily like the Tracksmith Elliott for my workout, so that's one area that they're different, but when it comes to those easy runs, I feel like that's probably the closest shoe that I can compare it to, that at least of the shoes that you guys are likely familiar with. I think that the shoe is actually most comparable to, although they're very, very different in a way as well, is the Speedland PDX. Now this is a $275 high-end trail running shoe uh, that has very different setup than the Trax and Thelly. I mean, the aesthetics are very different. The use cases are different. These are kind of like opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of when I would need each one of these shoes. But the reason why I think that they feel so similar to me is because of that insole. So here is that p insole that I took out of my Tracksmith Elliott. And this is the both insole and midsole of the Speedland PDX. I think there's other stuff in here than just P-Bax, but it is a P-Bax midsole insole combo. It does also have a removable carbon fiber plate that you can take off from this shoe and make it just a P-Bax hybrid type of midsole insole. But I feel like the way that these two are kind of like squishy in that kind of like gristle or used bubblegum kind of way is very familiar to me. And the way that both of these shoes are a little bit firmer than I would expect when I hear the words p -backs, but are also still very capable and very enjoyable to run in on long runs. The, the comparisons to my mind jump out immediately, even though kind of like the overall ride mechanics are different, the way that they're set up is very different. This shoe has giant lugs on the bottom for extremely difficult terrain and a double BOA system in terms of the lacing system. And this shoe basically looks like 
you wouldn't really want to get it dirty ever. Uh, but those superficial layers aside, in terms of what the midsoles feel like to me, that's probably the closest shoe that I can compare it to. Now, one of the things that I want to do in terms of ending my review videos in 2023 is give you some summary points that might help you figure out whether this is indeed a shoe that you want. First, I want to say that this shoe I think is best for those long, easy miles. I also think it's going to be really great for travel and casual wear. So if you want to try to cut down the number of shoes that you're bringing on some of your trips and keep that luggage light, I think that the Tracksmith Elliott is going to be an elegant and effective choice for you. I think that the shoe that is most similar to in terms of ride is going to be that Endorphin Speed 3 because again, it has that little bit of firmness that I don't love love necessarily for daily training, but I think that a lot of you guys are really going to appreciate and I think that you're going to get along with them in very similar kinds of ways, except for speed work in this situation. I think that if you want to do speed work, that's where this shoe is going to pair well with another shoe in my lineup, and that is the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. Last year, they made a Tracksmith collab edition, and you could see there's a lot of similarities between these two shoes. I feel like Tracksmith was doing a little bit of experimenting in this collab and figuring out what some of their design language is going to be. So if you like the look of one, you probably like the look of the other, and if you're going to pick up one, you might as well pick up the other one as well because I do think they make a really great one to punch. Because as I mentioned, while this is similar to the Endorphin Speed 3, I don't think it loves speed work. On the other hand, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite absolutely loves it and it feels great. And both of these shoes are a little bit on the firmer side than what I personally prefer. But I think that for those of you who like that little extra level of firmness and maybe don't want so much squishiness are going to be able to appreciate both of these shoes, especially together. Now, as far as the buying recommendation guide goes, it's an expensive shoe. It starts at a $200 or $198. I think on the website now you can get in on the pre-order and units will start shipping at the end of this month. So it's not a cheap shoe and it's not necessarily going to be the best dollars per mile value type of shoe that I know some of you guys absolutely demand. So this is not a shoe for you guys, but if you're the type of runner who already has everything, I highly recommend picking up a pair of the Tracksmith Elliott. So those are my thoughts on this shoe. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?